Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Jake and you are watching Exploit Academy. In this video, we're gonna look at the VS FTPD software vulnerability in version 2.3.4. Now, I wouldn't say this is necessarily uh, an exploit because back in 2011, this was some code that was slipped into the open source software uh, VS FTPDD, but uh, it allows anyone to log in with any kind of username with a smiley face at the end of it and any kind of password they want. And what this would do is it would open a shell on the server on port 6200. So like you would basically act like you're gonna log into the server um, as you normally would, except when you put in your username, you put a smiley face at the end of it, press enter, put in any kind of password you want, press enter, and then it looks like it broke essentially, but then you would open another shell and uh, netcat or whatever into port 6200 on that server and you would have access to a remote shell. It's super easy to replicate this uh, exploit manually as well as um, using the Metasploit module that's provided inside of Metasploit. So let's go ahead and uh, check this out. I'm using VMware for this example, using Metasploitable as our vulnerable machine and Kali Linux as our attacker machine. Let's check it out. All right, guys, so I'm inside VMware. I have our uh, attacking machine, which is Kali Linux on one tab and Metasploitable, which is the vulnerable machine on the other tab. So for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna skip the whole network discovery and map portion of finding the IP address. I'm just gonna go into the Metasploitable machine and type in IP address show. And our IP address is 192.168.150.128 for Metasploit. So inside of Kali Linux, I went ahead and just did an end map scan to show you guys that port 21 is open on the Metasploit machine. This is an in-map scan for Metasploitable. To log into the FTP server to utilize the backdoor, it's super simple. All you have to do is use netcat, which is NC, the IP address of the machine you're trying to attack. So that'd be 192.168.150 dot one two eight and since this is an FTP uh, server we're going to type in port 21 and you can see here we're presented with the VS FTPD uh, login and this is super simple all you have to do is type in user and then any kind of username that you want so you could literally use like this for example but the key part of this is that you use the smiley face at the end. So a colon followed by a uh, closing parenthesis. So this right here. If you don't have this, the exploit won't work. So I'm gonna press enter. And then the password can be anything. You just wanna type in pass. And then again, I'm just gonna use anything as an example. Press enter and there you go. So it looks like nothing's happening. You don't really get any feedback for your commands, but that's perfectly normal. Um, what this did when we used that smiley face here when we created uh, when we logged in with the username was it opened up that shell on port 6200. So this was connecting to port 21 because we were trying to connect to the FTP software. So now we should have an open port on 6200 that gives us access to a remote shell. So all you have to do is open up a new terminal or clear your screen and we're going to netcat again. But in, instead of, again, instead of this time going to port 21, we're gonna go to port 6200 in hopes to get access to that shell. So again, netcat. I'm gonna use tag V for verbose so you can actually tell that it connects. If you don't use tag V, um, it doesn't say anything to you. So you don't even know if you're connected until you run a command. So I just like to use tag V. It's just, uh, it's easier. So netcat tag V 192.168.150.128. And port 6200. Now, sometimes this takes like 30 seconds or so. It it takes a minute, but you you let it sit and let it do its thing. It's gonna give you an error more than likely, like this right here. It says inverse host lookup failed, host name lookup failure. Not a big deal. What you want to see is this right here. You want to see the IP address, the port number, and open. So showing that you have a connection. So that's all you gotta do. Now we're inside a Metasploitable. 
we're inside the remote shell. So to test that, if I type in who am I, I am root. So you instantly get root access. I type in ls, we can see the file system. And just to verify, if I type in IP address shell, you can see that we have Metasploitable's IP address. So that's it for manual exploitation. It's super easy. It's actually faster than using Metasploit. Um, but if you want to do the Metasploit way, um, I'll show you that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and clear out of this. Let's go ahead and open up Metasploit. So MSF console. Wait for that to load. All right, so now that we're inside Metasploit, all you have to do is search for the VSFTPD exploit, and you'll see right here, uh, number zero, like index zero, uh, you get exploit Unix FTP VSFTPD 2.3.4 backdoor, which is the backdoor command execution. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, type in U zero because it's zero on the list. So that will select it for us. And there we go, Unix FTP VS FTPD backdoor. I'm gonna hit show options. And then this was a super, like again, it's a super easy exploit. All you have to do is put in the remote host. So I'm going to type in set our host to 192.168.150.128. And again, show options just to verify that it's set. And exploit and then just watch it do its magic. <laughs> so as you can see, it's already um, gotten root, found a shell, and then here in a second, yep, command shell session one opened. So again, we should have access to Metasploitable. If I type in who am I, I'm root, ls, file system, ip address show, and we are Metasploitable as root. So it's super easy. Uh, it's a very entry level exploit, but that's really all you got to do. So if you're someone doing the OSCP, obviously you're going to want to do this exploit the manual way, as I showed you the first time. But uh, if you're doing like a hack, hack me, hack the box challenge or something, the Metasploit module works just as well. If you found this tutorial useful, uh, please like, subscribe to my channel, comment to show your support, or even comment if you even like have questions. Uh, I'll try to answer whatever questions you guys have or any kind of errors that you guys have. So thank you for watching this video and I'll see you next time.